Hello, friends. Welcome back. My name's Ramon. How are you today? So, as much as I get recommendations from you guys on different products or sunscreens or brands you guys are going to try, I also look at what other fellow creators are doing online. And recently, I've seen a lot of hype around a specific sunscreen. And that's why we're going to be talking about this today: the Garnier Ombre Solaire Sensitive UV Face Fluid SPF 50 Plus. More specifically, fellow creators on Instagram like Skin Tea, Glow with Ola, and Top Shelf Edit have been talking about this very consistently on Instagram, and it caught my eye mainly because it's a very affordable, high protective, lightweight sunscreen that promises to leave a demi matte finish and control your oil throughout the day, all for being less than 10 pounds. Not only that, but it's also specifically designed for sensitive skin. So, what are my thoughts on it? Before we get into the video, I'm gonna ask you to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up, and down below, have you tried this? What are your thoughts? This is pretty much only really accessible here in the UK and the EU, although I know some American friends have been able to get their hands on it. And if I figure out how, I'm gonna put those links down below in the description box, but... Tell me your thoughts on this. So looking at the claims for this on the Garnier and Boots website, it's basically developed for face and delicate eye contour areas. It's meant to be for the utmost sensitive skin, specifically in the utmost sensitive areas of the face, which are generally around the eye. Garnier themselves claims that their UV face fluid is an ultra light daily sun protection that is quickly absorbed. So it sets quick and it's intended for sensitive areas of the face and it's intended for daily use. So it offers great protection for just regular everyday life. Note that does not mean it is water resistant. Looking at more of their online claims, it contains some hyaluronic acid. It's intended to hydrate the skin for 20 four hours as well as leaving a matte finish on the face. It also claims to be fragrance free, meant for really, really sensitive skin. There's a lot of testing behind it to prove so. And it also has very high protection for fair and sensitive skin, protecting specifically from UVB, UVA, and long UVA rays. And it also has infrared protection as well. So I'll be reviewing this using my standard 6Fs chemical sunscreen testing rubric, where I highlight the 6Fs, feel, finish, filters, formulation, foundation wear, and fragrance. In the footage of me applying it, you'll see me applying roughly a quarter teaspoon or more to cover my face, my ears, and my neck. I'll leave it to set for five minutes upon which I'll put on my makeup. You'll see how the makeup looks on initial application. You'll see what it looks like after a couple hours of wear as well as how this reapplies over the makeup because one thing I love about chemical sunscreens is that they reapply really easily over makeup and they look really good. So let's get into it. First F, feel. One of the really interesting things about the sunscreen is that right out the bottle, it is liquidy. So I'm gonna show that they actually request that you do shake this before application, so. So you see right out the bottle, it's dripping out and it's really runny. But the weird thing about this is that as soon as I start rubbing it in, I don't know why, I feel like it thickens up a little bit. It does work in really, really easy into the skin and it is really lightweight, but I do feel like while it's really drippy outside the bottle, the minute you start rubbing it and working it in, it thickens up a little bit, but it's a super, super lightweight, light liquid texture. It looks almost gel-like on the skin. As you can see, initially the finish of it looks a little bit more radiant, but let's let it sit for a second. And here we are roughly a minute later and it's matte. The really weird thing about it is on initial application, it has a really radiant look to it, but let's sit down for roughly one to three minutes and it goes matte. The texture of it too, there's like no slip to it. So it sets down to a really nice natural matte finish and it does control oil throughout the day. I actually did test this for a few days before filming the application footage for this review. And I figured out that no matter what the skincare was underneath it, the finish was going to be matte. The day that I applied the sunscreen, you can see as it goes on, I work it into my skin. There is no white cast. They claim it's not gonna have a white cast. It's solely organic filters, so it doesn't leave any trace on the face. I actually use this in place of a moisturizer. It does claim to hydrate the skin, and most sunscreens that I use, I use in place of moisturizer, just because I do have more oily skin. So I wanted to see how it would look on my skin, how that oil controlling property would look throughout the day, as well as how it would sit on my skin with no moisturizer underneath it. And you can see it sets down natural matte finish. I did feel nicely moisturized, but more so it just it really controlled my oil throughout the day. I was not shiny at all. So while it is really lightweight and it sets down really nicely to control oil throughout the day, I, as an oily skin individual, can use it in place of moisturizer, but if you have dry skin, do not recommend moisturizing underneath this. Looking at the filters for this, coming from the UK and the EU, you're able to use a lot of those really fancy filters, and this has a lot of them. First and foremost, it has Tinosorb S, so it's gonna give you really nice, very high photoprotective, broad spectrum protection, and I'm talking the full extent of that spectrum. But on top of that, you have a lot of other filters to really fortify specific areas of that. For the UVB side, you have things like octosalate and UV T150 that really bump up and give you really nice stable UVB protection. We also have Avo Benzone as well as Mixoral SX and Mixoral XL. Those are both L'Oreal patented sunscreen filters that do cover broad spectrum as well as a little bit more of the UVA side of the spectrum as well. So all paired together, you're getting very high photo stable, very high protective values. My one caveat with that is that so this has SPF 50 plus, so it has a high SPF value. In the EU and the UK, instead of having PA plus systems, they have specifically, they designate UVA protection on the packaging. And it also does say it has long UVA. So it covers the full extent of UVA two and UVA one. Talked about that with the filters. But then if you look at the packaging that the sunscreen comes in specifically, where it designates how much UVA protection it offers, it only gives you three out of five stars, which is interesting to me because the filters in this, especially with the Tinosaur, with the Avo Benzone, with the Mixorals, 
you are, in my mind, going to have really high, very high photo stability UVA protection, but then the packaging doesn't reflect that. So I'm really confused on that. Don't know why. I will look into that though. Looking at what else the formulation features, it doesn't feature a lot. It's a very straight to the point sunscreen. It does feature glycerin and sodium hyaluronate. So those are some of the more humectant properties in this. But overall, there's really nothing else in here. There's some tocopherol to give you a little bit of an antioxidant property in this, but it's a very straight to the point sunscreen. But what I will point out is this does feature alcohol and you can tell it's a very lightweight texture and alcohol works great in these sunscreens that specifically feature chemical filters because it allows the formula to set down quickly and set down nicely and gives it really nice elegance, especially on oily skin types. So with foundation wear, and this is what I thought was really interesting. I was like, this is a chemical sunscreen that sets down matte. And I was worried about how the makeup would wear on top of it, mainly because there's no slip to this. With reapplying the sunscreen on itself, because there's no slip, it's hard to work into it. So I was really worried about how makeup would buff into the sunscreen's texture, but surprisingly, no issues. It really does prep your skin nicely for makeup, especially if you have oily skin, just because it gives you a very matte, very diffused base. It minimizes a lot of texture in my mind. And so it makeup buffs beautifully on top of it. The finish of your makeup is seamless. You can buff bronzer, contour, blush, and all stuff on it. No issues. My one qualm is with the under eye. Make sure it's just prepped really, really well. And I found that this did control oil throughout the entire day. So my beat was flawless from morning till night and I had no issues with that. Also, a really weird thing with this is because it was so matte and the foundation I was wearing when I was uh, applying on camera was really matte, I didn't have to set my face. I only set my face because I went in ham with setting sprays and I probably would have set my under eyes still, but I wasn't greasy. I really honestly felt like I could be fine without setting my face. This controlled my oil and my shine so well. So now getting to fragrance. This is the first sunscreen I think I've used in the longest time that I smelled it and I was like, that is a sunscreen. This is the most going to the beach in the middle of summer smell, nostalgia that I've had in a very long time. So it's a very pungent aroma. Even on the back of my hands, I still smell it even though it's been about five minutes since I applied it there. It does set down a little bit and I don't feel like I smell it throughout the day consistently, but it's a very strong smell on initial application. I don't smell alcohol actually very much in this. I can tell it's in there initially, but that dissipates quicker than the actual sunscreen smell. So if you don't like smells, there's no fragrance in this, but it just, it smells like sunscreen, so. so. Besides that, my overall thoughts on this, here's the tea. This is a roughly 10 pounds, if not less. I think I bought this for six pounds because I bought it to ship to the boots next to me because they didn't have it in stock. I paid roughly eight pounds, which is still less than $10, so it's cheap. You only get 40 mil, but it's cheap and it's affordable. Also, it leaves no white cast. I know my friend Glow Skin Guy, AKA Rashawn, also used this and talked about it and he loves it. So it leaves no white cast even on his skin tone. He's about Fenty 445, I believe. This leaves a matte finish. So you've, you got oily skin. This is gonna be a holy grail product, especially I'm so excited to use this during the summer because this controls shine like nobody's business. I felt like I would blot and I would see I would be a little bit greasy on the back of my arm but I wouldn't look shiny. And overall, I got no issues with this. I will say in the middle of testing this, I had a really bad skincare reaction. I don't know what caused it, but I got really bad inflammation, especially around my eye. And this claims it's for sensitive eye skin and I applied it around there. No burning, no irritation, no inflammation, even though my skin was a little bit more compromised. So I do believe this does live up to the claim of being good for sensitive skin types. It has theoretically high photoprotective value for even more fair skin like the sunscreen itself claims, but then I feel like that comes into question when you're looking at the actual UVA rating. So I'm really confused on that. And it was great with makeup, so that's a plus. With the reapplication on top of itself though, I feel like the texture of it because there's no slip underneath it. This isn't a very emollient texture. And the makeup was so matte because of the sunscreen. Reapplying it got kind of weird. Not horrible, but I need to play around with how I reapply this. So that's another thing. So the Garnier Ombre Solaire Sensitive UV Face Fluid SPF 50 Plus. This is 100% Ramon recommended. Something with really good lightweight texture that's gonna control oil and shine really, really well and sits really nicely lightweight on the skin is definitely something right up my alley. I do love a radiant look, but sometimes you really need to figure out ways to control your shine, especially during the summer. And I feel like this is gonna come in clutch, especially cause it's so cheap, literally less than 10 pounds, really affordable, you can get it at Boots, super accessible. So this literally ticks everything I look for in a sunscreen and that's why it's Ramon recommended. So with that being said, let me know down below, are you gonna get your hands on this? If you're in the US or anywhere else but the UK or the EU, how are you gonna get your hands on this? If I can't find a link again, I'll put it down below, but if you figure out another way, let me know because I think this is really worth trying out if you can get your hands on it, so do so. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and pinch related content on my channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.